How are you guys doing today? Um, it's been a while. Uh, how many of you were uh, attend? How many of you uh, were at the, the 65th anniversary uh, when we had the combined service? How awesome was that? That was like really, really awesome. And did you did you enjoy the translation? I thought the translation was really, really awesome. <laughs> like, oh my god! Especially when the translator had to, had to translate about himself. <laughs> I never talked myself in third person, but I had to. It was kind of awkward for me. Um, but we got something really, really special for you today. Uh, to, uh, uh, the, uh, this month is actually our uh, mission month across the whole church. So we, we, we obviously don't want Bali to miss out on it. So we got something really, really awesome. And I'm not going to be preaching. I'm not going to be the ones doing the sharing today, but we're going to have something really, really awesome. And um, in fact, um, Danny is going to share, and one of our other, uh, he, she's actually uh, one of our deacons, and also a, a, a member of Bali, uh, Epan, is going to share as well, because both of them were very involved in this video, uh, part of this, uh, they, they, were, they were very involved in, in uh, putting up this uh, great super team that we went to Kenya. So I want to just kind of take the time just to show you this video. It's really, really awesome. And then Danny's going to come up and share with you. And then Ipan's going to come. And I'm going to wrap up. And we're going to do a very special mission offering in the end. All right? So let's welcome the video.从空中鸟看，以列列长条形的铁皮屋，比邻排列，紧密相连。这是位于肯亚奈洛比，全世界最大的贫民窟之一。有高达数十万的人口，拥挤的生活在这个脏乱、生活条件极差的区域。二十多
手上，他们通常都是一直在拿着铲子或者是粉刷，那他们其实不是很方便。就是在做一个清理身体或清理手部再来吃东西，因为对他们来说太浪费时间了。他们常常会宁可就是在烈日当中持续不停歇的工作。所以我们的团员呢，我们就会主动的在一些比较固定的时间去为他们准备矿泉水，然后准备食物，然后甚至是去喂食他们。我们在守护的其实是每一个团员，因着神的呼召来到这里要做神的工作。我们就像是个守门员一样。我们每天三个人一组，然后跟配搭这里的一个老师，然后一个精卫，然后我们会一起去呃探访，然后他们这些家庭都是呃 commuter school 这些学生的家长这样。我们在路上就是会有人说，哎，你可以为我祷告吗？然后就是一直帮我们拦下来，想要，然后我们就说没关系，你可以就是来 commuter school， 我们可以在 healing room 为你祷告。觉得就是看到，就是真的是他们自己觉醒，然后开始渴慕。让我非常欣慰的是，我们从三年前开始了 Super Team 的短宣队。今年不只是跨牧区、跨福音中心，我们甚至进入到一个整个的灵粮网络、大家庭的那一个 Synergy 的一个力量出来，一起聚集在这一个肯亚、奈罗比这个地方，使用他们的专业，使用他们的恩赐来服侍这块土地，服侍这一群百姓，真的是非常令人兴奋的。这边墙壁的设计是世界地图，原因是因为想让孩子们可以更多的看见这样一个世界。他们一辈子都在学校，甚至在贫民窟的当中，可是我们要让他们知道，他们在这个世界，在这个位置上虽然很小，但是世界却这么大，他们的未来更有无限的宽广。我特别有一个感动，就是想让 Melody 牧师用他的手印来标示出台湾的位置。同时 ，James 牧师也可以用他的手印标示出 c o m i d o 学校恩慈小学它的位置。当时他说：“呃、um, ，Melody， will you allow me to bring the super team？” 看着他，我说：“你说真的吗？”因为我已经可以看到那个那个难度之高，确实，我看到学校的需要，那我也希望看到这个需要被满足。但是我总是想，这个困难，那个困难。所以当有一位弟兄这么勇敢地告诉我，我们可以做，我觉得对我来说真的是像做梦一样。This place won a hundred people's hearts. The hundred people that came here, their lives are forever changed, right? Um, it wasn't the worker that painted the walls. It was the sacrifice of one of our church members that painted the walls, right? That's where the meaning comes from. It doesn't come from the final result, but it comes from who actually made the sacrifice to do it. It will leave not only our school permanently changed, children completely feel feeling overwhelmed by the love. You know, like first day, <laughs> I totally did it wrong, you know, because we, we, we actually scheduled lots of classes. It didn't work well. You know, like, no, there's no life there. Everybody's in a very strict, rigid situation. If you look closely to them, you will see lots of, lots of beat marks, like big, big dots. I, I talked to Melody like, yeah, what, why are your kids so very conservative and extremely reserved? And it's like, yeah, because you know, they got beaten up a lot. And that's the culture, that's the education right here. So let's change the plan, I told my team. And my team is like super cooperative. It's like, yeah, let's do it. So we just have them to play um, like games and they do it for like two whole hours. They start to turn like kids. And like coming days, you can see like while they are worshiping, you know, really be free. This is how it should be. You know, just be really like kids. Not only Christian, even the Muslims allow this like 
What is happening? Why are these people having so, so much love for us? They can see they are not only coming to work just in Comindo, but they are going to their houses. People are saying, these people, they really love us. These people, they really love us. They have seen that they have been shown by the team. This is what Christianity is. If you come to Kenya, you want to see these animals and whatnot. And it was heartbreaking to me to hear that most of these children have never even been, you know, they've never been in their lives, it's so close to them. And we took, you know, we had these buses and we sent them over, about 100 children each day. And they were going crazy even on the bus. And then, and then I heard that most of these children have never even been in a car before, which is why they were so happy about, you know, being in a car. They were, every time we turned, they would scream. And they loved it. And this is the, um, something so simple, you know, can touch their lives so deeply. Uh, it's I think they got to sense uh, a sense of uh, hope and I believe this is something that everybody will need because in the midst of the slums, in the midst of the tragedy, in the midst of the hopelessness, they see a way out because they saw how much people care for them and people who had never met, who were willing to come all the way across the world. I really believe this is a seed of hope that has been instilled. And I believe the transformation that we did in schools uh, will bring about a transformation to the people's hearts and they're going to be able to want to transform with, along with the power of the Holy Spirit just to, from the inside out. Super Team 又一次与神同工, 写下宣教历史的新业。满意在每个团员心中的感动与领受虽然不尽相同,但是大家共同见证的是, 神在Kamido行了令人赞叹的事。因着神的同在,Kamido像是贫民窟里的一颗珍珠,明亮而闪耀。相信这亮光要从Kamido蔓延开来,照亮许多黑暗角落,翻转许多生命,为贫民窟带
uh, knowledge I had, no matter how much training I had at church, I was an orphan. There was something in my heart always telling me that I wasn't good enough, that, I, that, I, that God, I had to keep on working for God to love me. And I had to keep on doing something to make him happy. And it was, um, it was actually on the first Sunday that I was here at Bread of Life International. At that time, it was called the English Ministry. Pastor Chang, he gave a sermon on the Father's heart. And um, he, he basically said, you know, a lot of times the reason why we go through our lives feeling so broken and empty is because we're orphans. Uh, we're, we have an orphan spirit. That preaching changed my life. And I remember at that time, I went to Pastor Chang and I said, hey, Pastor Chang, I, I actually don't know what it means to be a son. Uh, would you teach me? And he said, I don't think I could teach you what it means to be a son, but I can walk with you. And I, I, because he was also on the journey of sonship. You know, fast forward so many years, so many stories. I'll tell you, um, when I first joined Bread of Life International, what I was told was that this was going to be a ministry that impacts the nations. The reason is because the nations come here. I just want to know, you know, just in this, in this room alone today, I'm sure we have more than 10 nations represented. I'm, I'm, I'm more than 100% sure that we have more than 10 nations represented. Uh, you know, this summer, I had the opportunity uh, for about five months to travel the world. I've, I've been to over 20 countries in the last uh, five months. And... What I do at the mission department is I go to our different Bread of Life brand churches around the world. And I, I, I go and I bring the heart of Pastor O, uh, Pastor James O, who is our senior pastor, and Pastor John. And share with them who we are as Bread of Life. You know, one thing, though, that has been just, just on my mind throughout this whole summer is Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm just going to turn there. And... You know, the Lord has been speaking to me through this verse this summer. I'm going to just read it out loud. This is a mystery that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, I just thank you so much that... At the center of it all, you have family as your most valuable, valuable cornerstone. And at the center of that, you have given, you have Jesus, who is the author, the perfecter, and the finisher of our faith, God. And as we, as we talk about your heart today, God, I ask that your anointing to, to see the lost safe, to see the, 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 the chains be broken, God to set the captives free, God. May this anointing of your heart, Lord God, fall upon this place. And as we, as your sons and daughters, reach into your heart, I ask you, Lord God, that you would give us the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation to see as you see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, this verse has been speaking to me throughout this summer because I'll tell you what I do. Um, like I, said, like, like I said, I have the privilege of going around the whole world and going into our different ministries around the world. And every single country I go to, I kid you not, I read this on Business Insider. There's top 10 countries that are the most dangerous in the world. I go to four of them. <laughs> right? And I'm like thinking, no wonder why no one else at church wants to go. You know, I didn't know. I'm sure they knew, right? You know, Taiwanese are very safe people, you know. Like send the Korean there. He's crazy, you know. So, so places like El Salvador, right, where the, where, the, where the chances of being murdered are higher than you getting hit by lightning. You know? I don't know. It's just, it, it's crazy, right? Um, but, but God was speaking to me. He said the mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Christ. To me, what God was talking to me about was the spirit of sonship. He was saying, hey, Israel... I've called them my chosen. But you know what? This thing called the spirit of adoption is available to you all. I have called Israel my chosen one. But guess what? Through the blood of Christ, it made a way for all of us to become one in the family of Christ. Right? And that's why it's because the power of this gospel 
that we are heirs to everything that God has for us. I, you know, as I was reading this, I just became, and then it says, I became a servant of this gospel. Most of us have this, have this idea that the gospel is, is just words that you preach and someone ex- accepts Jesus and they go, no, the gospel is that the father sent his son to a dying world, not so that he can save them. Saving of, is, is a byproduct of it, but it's to call his sons and daughters back home, to be in a relationship, to be in a family, to have an inheritance. And that's where I was like, God, thank you. You know, I spent, I spent so much time in the air. You know, just this, just this year alone, I, ha- I, w- I think I've been over 90 flights, right? And I, I'm, I'm jumping across the world. I'm telling you, I'm the closest to heaven than all of you guys. <laughs> you know, there's one t- it's, if there's one great place to pray, it's in the airplane when there's turbulence, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, Jesus, you know? <laughs> That's lots of prayer for me, <laughs> you know? I hate flying, right? You guys are like, yeah, amen to that, right? See, but it's this gospel that did this. This was so many years ago. I mean, I I would say this is six or seven years ago when the Latino ministry started. You know, you guys see Ernie there. You guys see Pastor Rudy there, you know. Who else do you see? Who else is there? Is Gina? I don't know who else is there. Uh, Mafia, yeah, yeah. I, these are a lot of faces. Uh, some faces you guys are familiar with. Some, fa- some faces you guys are not familiar with. But this gospel is what allowed a home for the Latinos here in Taiwan. It's what actually, it's what drew them here. And, you know, Ernie's still here. I mean, that's crazy, right? <laughs> <coughs> who, who doesn't love Ernie? I, I don't know. <laughs> All right? This gospel does this. <laughs> look at Pastor Rudy, right? Look, look at that. Good looking guy, right? You have Amy Ko. She, she's still doing design right now. She was, long time ago, she was wrapping uh, uh, cookies. That was her ministry because that was the extent of her skill, right? <laughs> but five years later, she's doing production. and You see, in this home, we raise up great, incredible people because this is the house of God. And when we have an incredible father, all we can be is incredible sons and daughters, right? Look at this, right? You have, oh, you guys, you guys are going to see Mariah soon. Wow. That, that, Mariah is Frank's uh, fiance. She's coming back, right? She can bake cookies. Like, you know, in Amsterdam, they have cookies, you know, the, you know, the, uh, addictive kind she bakes cookies that are better than that and they're addictive right so you know and right now she's in she's out in london right now and she studied for two years on dance therapy to to free um emotionally emotionally difficult uh girls that that have been abused while they were growing up (sighs) man i'll show you the next picture who's that you guys see pastor carlo Right there? You guys see Pastor Carlo? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, you, do you see Chris? Do you guys see Chris? Chris is right there? Yeah? <laughs> this was our first, um, this was our mission trip to Guatemala. Not, not only, not only do we create and raise up incredible sons and daughters from this house, But we go into the nations and we bring that same gospel that draws in sons and daughters from all over the world into the body of Christ. (laughs) See, but I got to tell you guys, as, as incredible as all this is, most of you guys know back at home, wherever you're from, even here in Taiwan, there are some realities on the ground. You know, for me, I get to spend my time in Africa. I get to spend my time in Southeast Asia. I get to spend my time in in, uh, Central America. I get to spend my time here in Taiwan. And I'll tell you, I'm sure every single one of you, if you went back home today, there would be a child starving. There would be 
a mom that's being beaten at home. There will be, you know, corruption in the government. You know, in Hungary, we work with the Roma Gypsies. And they're the most marginalized group of people in Europe. You know, we were there last year. And one of the team members came to me and basically said, I've been to Europe a thousand times, but I've never seen such poverty in all of Europe. It's because they never actually had the courage to walk into a Roma settlement. You know, I remember one of the first times that I walked into a Roma settlement. I was there with Pastor Vili. Most of you guys know him. Most of, many of you guys know him. Some of you guys might not. But he is one of our Roma pastors. And as we were walking down the street, he pointed to the street corner and said, Hey, Danny. Yeah, of course, this is through a, a translator because he doesn't speak English. He said, you know, on that street corner, there are 16 and 17-year-old girls that sell their body because they have nothing to eat. And I said, what? This is Europe. And then a little more, we walked down a little more, and he pointed out another house. And he said, hey, Danny, did you know that in that house, there's a mom with five kids, and their dad passed away, and she has no way to feed the kids. What do you do when you're faced with so many challenges? I remember that night I went to God, and I got down on, 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 on my knees next to my bed, and I said, God, why? Not, it's not why is this happening, because we all know why things happen. Right? I, I hope we do. Right? Right? We live in a fallen, just theology, we live in a fallen world, blah, 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 okay. Right? <clears throat> no, but why have you put this problem before my eyes? That's the question I asked God. I said, God, why? And he said to me, what he, he would say to any one of us, I want you to do something about it. Do you remember the time when Jesus, the disciples came and said, Jesus, we have no food. You should send the people away. And what did Jesus say to the disciples? I want you to do something about it. Yeah, I kind of felt, felt what the disciples felt. And I'm like, uh, yeah. Okay, what we can do is go home and forget, right? Just, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, I, go to, I go to Latin America, quite out central. I was just there for two, uh, two months. We have incredible corruption in the government. You know, society is breaking down. People don't trust. I remember the first time I went to Guatemala. We're driving. And then there's traffic. And we're like, I'm asking Pastor Rudy, why is there traffic? And he says, oh, it's okay. Somebody just shot up a bus. I'm just like, What? And then we're, dropping, we're, we're driving by and there's shell, machine gun shell casings all over the floor. And the bus has holes inside of it. And Pastor Rudy says, ah, that's normal, don't worry. <laughs> and all of you Latinos are like, uh-huh, amen to that. <laughs> right? <clears throat> I remember the first time I went to Guatemala, I asked them, how many of you guys have ever been robbed at gunpoint or knife point? Everybody raises their hand. And I'm thinking, how do you guys live here? They say, oh, we got used to it. They have, a, they have a fake phone, you know, the one that they give. You know, the, the Latinos are, are, are smiling, right? Just, right? <laughs> and then you guys are thinking, well, if it's so bad, you know, why don't you just walk? <laughs> There's so much traffic. Traffic is crazy there. Why don't you just walk? Because if you walk, you're going to get mugged and killed. So you got to stay in your car. It, it's crazy, guys. I ask God so many times. There are so many challenges in this world. What do we do about it? Ah, oh, man. And then, about eight years ago, there was this movie that had the answer to it all. A movie, right? And the movie was called The Avengers. <laughs> and it was this quote. <clears throat> you see, I tell you, this was a prophetic word. God speaks to me through movies, man. If you guys ever want to sit down with me and talk about prophetic, movies is it. This is what Nick Fury said. He said, 
I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm offending you for not quoting Jesus, all right? <laughs> but I'm sure Jesus said this in one way or another. <laughs> he said, the idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people, see if they could become something more, see if they can work together when we needed them to fight the battles we never could. Here's something that I've, I've seen around the world is that the church is a glorious church. And in the reason why the church is so glorious is because it's made up of God's presence and the remarkable people that are inside of it. You see, what God was telling me was this. This is a solution that cannot be solved by yourself. But it is something that the church can do because I have given authority to the church to overcome the gates of hell. It's, you see, this gospel, what it does for each and every one of us is it unites us as one body. This gospel unites us as one body. You can look in this room, and like I said, there's more than 10 nations represented here. And all of us in this room have one thing in common. Do you know what that is? We're still alive. <laughs> and as long as there's breath to be breathed and there's work to be done, there is a mission and a purpose as to why we're here. And that mission and purpose is so connected to the heart of God, which is to seek and save the lost. And as a church, if we, if we miss this one thing, we would have missed all of it. Maybe each and every one of us have individual callings, individual gifts. Every single one of us, we do. I do. You do. But what would happen if we had 10 Iron Mans? It wouldn't work. Why? All of their eagles are too big. <laughs> right? Or if we have 10 hulks, what would we do? No, we wouldn't do anything. The world would just fall apart. There would be no organization. Or what if we had no Steve Rogers? You know? The man who has the moral direction. But you see, the reason why I love the Avengers so much is because it's, it's, it's a sh it tells a truth of the church. That Jesus said we are one body and every single part of this body functions and is needed. See, <laughs> this year when we went to Kenya, I went to, I went to Kenya actually last year. And, I, and like Pastor Melody said, I said, hey, Pastor Melody, can we bring a super team? And she said, Danny, the government is going to think that we're trying to take over. <laughs> You have a hundred Chinese people or Asian people coming in. And then she said to me, Danny, you guys saw the video. There's no roads into this slum, right? The roads are created by trash on the floor. Like imagine you're, you're, you're walking and you throw trash and you have a hundred thousand other people doing it, right? And no one's cleaning it up. And everyone is walking on top of the trash. That's how their roads were made, right? Cost saving. Maybe Taiwan should, but no, I'm just kidding. You know, I remember when I went there, it rained. Do you know what happens when it rains and there's that much trash? It becomes mulch and it comes all the way to your knee, right? So we had to wear these things called gum boots, boots that come up here, and we have to wade through. How many of you guys? have been to Africa. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you guys know? My brothers? Yeah. All right. Awesome. We had to wade through the mud. And he said, Danny, it was hard to bring three people and you want to bring in a hundred? <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, why not? <laughs> hey, the Avengers defeated Ultron. What can we do, right? You know, it's just... <clears throat> the, and the challenges... We're on and on. We wanted to build a bathroom. We wanted to build a playground. You know, in Kenya, when you give somebody money, you're risking everything because they might not give you your product. Right? They were like, who can we trust? I'm like, all right, let's trust this guy. We, we buy 35 wood, and 35 pieces of wood, and I, I kid you not, on the way 
to the school, five are gone. The middleman took five and sold it on his own. And he said, oh, it must have fell off the truck. Right? This is what we deal with. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's, a, it's a different world out there. And yet, she said to me, you want to bring 100 people? And I said, you know, <laughs> I don't know. But here's, here's something that I do see. For me and the mission department at Bird of Life, we see Jesus going here. All we're doing is following. This is not us. We see Jesus going into the slums. And we see Jesus hugging these kids. And we see Jesus painting these walls. And we see Jesus making this playground. You know, just a really touching story for me. We had a, once we got all the construction stuff done, I remember um, this year we had a, one of the construction guys. He was saying, these guys went in at 7 a.m. and they worked straight, eight, nine hours straight without taking any breaks. And after the first two days, <clears throat> this is what I said, come on guys, you can't pay anybody to do that, right? Imagine, would you guys be willing to pay your own money to go to a country where it's so poor and so broken? And would you be willing to work nine hours a day and then after nine hours a day go into worship and pray? You can't pay anybody to do that. And you know, the question was asked, why? And one of our brothers at that time, he said to me, he said, as I dig each shovel, I see my kids' faces. And I think, I'm doing this for my kids. And he said, I feel the Father's heart. This is what the Father wants. <sighs> see? The Avengers, they came together for a purpose. <laughs> you guys are like, stop talking about the Avengers. Okay, I'll stop, right? <clears throat> what unites us is the gospel. But unity has a purpose. Unity allows us to accomplish the impossible. What I cannot do myself. Hey, I have a hard time changing a light bulb, guys, right? What I cannot do by myself, maybe someone else in this body has a skill set, has knowledge, has experience, has something that God has placed inside them, some, a, a story that they didn't tell, but God had put them through seasons of hardship, seasons of stewardship, and they're waiting. They're waiting for God to say, come on, son, let's go. Let's get to work. See, this, this work allows us to accomplish the impossible. I'll tell you, we went into this, uh, this school wanting to paint three walls, four walls, something like that. We got 27 walls done. That's crazy, right? We went in thinking that we were going to build just, you know, a little sand pit and construction. We got like a swing set done, a zebra crossbar done. We got little, little, th <sighs> whatever it was that our goals, God surprised us because he blew us away by what was possible when we came together. I remember at that time, I asked Pastor Kathy, who's in Los Angeles, I said, hey, Pastor Kathy, we have a lot of tech people in Taiwan, but the one thing that Taiwan doesn't use is an English operating system. We need people from the States to come and build the very first computer network room in a slum in all of Kenya. And she, <laughs> she was like, okay, sure, <laughs> you know. I'll send you two of my best guys. And these guys are like, the best, best. Like the state of California uses them for all their network and hardwiring in the whole in the whole state. And they came, and they they came and they said, "This is incredible." You know, last week, last month, uh, we were talking with Pastor James, and Pastor James said, "Kenya just implemented a new law uh, right after we left, that all tests and all grades had to be submitted." using the computer. And we were like, whoa. So we're okay? And he's like, praise God, we are. See, there are things that God is doing. 
that we don't even know what it's going to do in the years to come. Maybe one day from these kids, the president will come out. Who knows? Maybe great business leaders, great minds and thinkers. You know, this year, we have a, we have, we have a lot to do. I remember at that time, you know, this, um, we were at uh, the 65th anniversary. I was having a, a personal conversation with Pastor James. And Pastor James, he said, he, I, I asked Pastor James, hey, Pastor James, is there anything else? And when you were a young man and you were dreaming with God about what kind of school that, you, that, that, that God wants you to build in the most desolate place, is there anything else? Because here we are, your sons. We want to fulfill that dream for you. And he said to me, yes, there are, Danny. I want to build a library where the kids, a state-of-the-art library, where the kids can come and read all year long, even during their breaks, read about the great men and women of faith, not only men, men and women of faith, but scientists and doctors and lawyers, and be inspired for more. And he said, I want to build a multi-purpose hall, a hall where the kids can come and not have to run around in the trash and play, but they can come and they can shoot the basketball. And I was like, oh, basketball, huh? <laughs> I want to create a basketball court where the kids can play, you know, and run around and, and shoot ball. I was like, you know what? Taiwan has Jeremy Lin. Why not Kenya? You know what? Kenya, Kenya could get a Jeremy Lin too, right? You see, <clears throat> and as he was giving me this list of so many things, you know, this year we visited 150 families, but this, this school has 450 kids, 600 kids. We still have 350 families to visit. He asked me, how are you going to do this? Because this year it seemed hard, and, and we saw God do incredible things. But for our trip next year, it seems impossible. How are we going to do it? You know? I, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know. I, I, I absolutely have no idea. But here's one thing that I did do know, is that we're going to do it together. We're going to do this together. Each and every one of us in this room, each and every one of us in this church, whether it's 100 NT or it's going to be our time to go there and meet the kids and play with the kids, we're going to do this together. You know, I'm, I'm going to invite um, Ipan up on stage in a bit, in a second. Ipan has been our, she was actually our projects manager for this, for this uh, team this year. She has absolutely no idea about painting and construction. <laughs> Or, or anything like that, you know. But I want to I wanna invite her up here to share. Because, you know, most people think you're a full-time, you know, and you're in full-time ministry, actually. All of us are in full-time ministry. But you can do it because you have the time. And the mind. All right, Ipan. She is our deacon that oversees our mission department right now. So I want to give her a hand to come up here and share. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Ipan, and I'm also Danny's sister, as you can see the resemblance. <laughs> anyway, uh, my story is very different from Danny. I, I have been doing missions for the past 15 years with the Bread of Life Church. I actually grew up in the Bread of Life. Um, but I do have a full-time job. I work in tech. I've been working in tech industry for about 20 years. I tell people I started at the age of five, by the way, if you want to do the math, okay? So that's why I'm calling myself the part-time missionary. Yeah, because I don't do this full-time. And growing up at church, I've always known about missions. I've always known about missionaries. But honestly, it never crossed my mind that it had anything to do with me. Because I thought that was a job of full-time staff, full-time pastors, uh, full-time workers at church. They can go. We can support them in prayer, financially, whatever. But it has nothing to do with me. And also because in my mind, this is what a missionary looks like. And respect, but I really can't relate to that, so that's all great. 
Um, so the first time I went in 2004 was not because I was, you know, specially touched or whatever. It was because the location was Thailand, and I've never been to Thailand before, <laughs> and I just wanted to go on a trip. It looked like a really good deal, okay? So I wanted to go out of curiosity. Um, so I was thinking to myself, okay, the pastor's going to be doing the ministering, the, you know, small groups, worship. What are we normal people going to do? Oh, most likely we're going to play with the kids. We're going to take photos. So I was thinking in my mind, a mission trip's going to look like this, <clears throat> I'm going to be like Zhu Ling Jie and then, you know, taking nice photos and just playing with the kids, having a great time. I can do that, no problem. And what's even more is that that year, um, on top of uh, different tasks, they also assigned topics for us, for us lay people, right? So one guy was doing science camp, one person was doing English. My topic was music. So then I was thinking, music, Zhu Ling Jie Jie, and playing with kids, taking nice photos, when I get up onto the mountains of northern Thailand, it's going to look something like this. <laughs> that is my vision of what my mission is going to look like. Yeah. So back then, I was thinking to myself, wow, I got this mission thing all figured out, huh? Um, which, of course, was not the case, right? So here's the interesting thing about God's grace, is when we take one baby step, no matter how you took that step, no matter why you took that step, God can always take that and bring it to the next level. It's not about us, okay? It's taking that baby step. So, of course, it did not look like that, and it was very um, <clears throat> uncozy. Is, is that a word? And um, so, but I kept on going because growing up at church, I know the Bible. I know all these stories. But in mission, I saw the Bible come alive right in front, right in front of my eyes. The New Testament, the Old Testament, especially the book of Acts. You know, in church, sometimes staying here so long, we, we, we think of healing, we think of kingdom as if it's a metaphor. But when you go in mission field, it's a real thing that happens. And when you go there and you realize how big the need is, you see it and then you realize how small you are. You feel very inadequate. And that's when you realize, wow, we need grace. And that's when in unity with the people that we serve, that we receive the power of the kingdom. And so it was a very real thing for me. Even though the first five years, it was a lot of pruning, it was a lot of difficulty, but I kept on going and going because it was real. And so I've been to Thailand for 12 times, and every time we just keep on doing new things, and more and more marketplace people start coming out. And it was, in, I think, after the 12th time, I was asking the missions department, what's next? Are we continuing to do this? Are we going to do something new? And it turns out that they had the super team, and that year it was Hungary. That's how I met Danny. So that time, I was really excited for two things. One is because the church was doing a cross-mission thing. It was uh, a cross-ministry. So it was the international, the Chinese, the adult, the youth, and everybody. And secondly, after 12 years of sharing, my small group decided they're all coming with me this time. <clears throat> so that was really cool. And I remember vividly the first group meeting right here at the FX campus. Uh, when we all got together, the Chinese ministry people saw Boli for the first time. And they were like, wow, we have Wai Gore in church. <laughs> And then the bully people saw the Chinese ministry people. They were like, oh, my God, mother, pe uh, mother church people, you guys really do exist. <laughs> and then the, uh, us from the adult ministry, we saw the youth. We were like, wow, students. And then they saw us. They were like, wow, old people. <laughs> it was the culture shock was real, okay? <clears throat> right? Yeah. My roommate was a college student, so she, she confessed to me. So anyway, as, as cool as it was, the culture shock was real. We, we all felt, I think we're all thinking in the back of our heads is that with all the cultural differences, with the language barrier, with the age gap, how are we all going to become one team like the Avengers, right? How are we all going to become one team, let alone serve together? And let me tell you, not only did we become a team, it was like a jazz band. It was like a jazz band because everyone was still their unique self. Everyone had their little tune going on but together it was magic. And even though we were not perfect as a team, it was nonetheless beautiful and full of life. And you can just see there in the ministry, right in the mission field in Hungary, where you see anointing just flow through this unity like crazy. And just being part of that was an honor by itself. So with that experience, just so that you know, my, my whole small group signed up for Kenya next year immediately, okay? And so this year we went to Kenya. You all saw the video. Um, Kenya Super Team 2019. 
This is what we did in numbers, because you know I'm a marketplace person. We need to quantify everything. <laughs> so yeah, seven walls, 17 classrooms, all the homes and all that. And you've all seen the video, the awesome children's ministry with a lot of awesome people from Boley, led by the awesome leader, Esther Lin. Um, so that was great. Yay, shout out. <clears throat> And uh, the home visitation, so they only had like 18 people, but they went out, 120 homes, and as you've seen on the video, a lot of people right on the way, you know, were asking them for prayer, were, um, we, at the end, I think, uh, at the school entrance, a lot of people were coming, moms with babies, say, hey, I heard that you guys are praying for people, can you pray for my kid and all that, and what's really cool is that the security guards, this is one of them, but the security guards, at the end of our trip, told Pastor Katie, the a leader of home visitation, saying, can you guys pray for me? Because I want, I've been following you guys. I've been seeing what you're doing. I've seen all the healing. I've saw all the prayers. I see things happen. I want to accept Jesus. And so what happened is that the security guards encounter God just by tagging along. That's what happens. Okay. And so back to what I did is projects. It's okay. We'll wait for it. <clears throat> Now, as Danny mentioned, I have no idea about construction. I don't know anything about design. I know a little bit about computers because I'm an IT person, uh, well, in IT uh, industry. Um, but then I naively just said yes, because I feel like, you know, church is doing something new. And so when I said yes, I realized, wow, I don't know how to get cement and paint and, you know, power tools and all that stuff. But I was like, you know, if we need furniture, let's go to Ikea Nairobi, which does not exist. <laughs> and then I was thinking, okay, let's do e-commerce. Let's just buy online. Well, try to do that. It's really, really unreliable, really shady. I don't know what, and I see furniture that looks like they're from the 80s. You know, it's just crazy. So that's just not there. And before I solved this problem, Danny was like, hey, why don't we build a computer room? Well, where do we get computers? I don't know. But fast, uh, long story short, Somehow, I found a friend 15 years ago, you know, randomly connected with me. He's the president of a computer company. They were able to offer this, and not only that, did we get uh, enough computers for the kids, but also for the teachers. And so I was really feeling, wow, God's doing something. We, we really have to catch up. Um, but still, you know, we're going in uh, April, but in January, I don't know where we're going to get cement. I don't know where we're going to get paint or anything like that. But I still went on my business trip to the U.S. to talk to the guys at Chino to discuss about the computer room. And um, they invited one of their members from the church who's been to Kenya before, so a hammer. So he sat with us. We were at brunch, and I just randomly asked him, hey, you know, hammer, so you've been to Kenya. <clears throat> Do you know how to buy cement in Kenya? <laughs> guys, he's in the construction industry. Yeah, he's in construction and civil engineering, and he happened to know a friend who has a friend in Kenya. So the whole Chinese New Year in February, I was doing conference calls, three-way calls, U.S., Taiwan, and basically I'm putting up all my you know, project management and procurement and budget control skills into this whole thing in mission, right? So we got that, and as Danny mentioned, you don't see the real thing, it's not real yet. Yeah, so I gave him that sheet of paper. That was my Instagram story, because I was so excited that we got that done. Okay, so finally, Kenya's construction bu budget done. And then Danny's like, hand me that sheet, I will go there myself. And I think just five minutes when you saw a contact person, he texted me. He's like, sis, you won't believe this. So this person who are, is working with us, his, um, he thought our slum was in a different area. But it turns out that the area that our school is in is, his, is where his wife's family grew up. And you know doing business there, there's still a tribal thing. There's a, a matter of trust. And for us at church, we still have to reimburse. We need invoices. We need receipts. You can't just do by cash. So they had enough trust that they would actually have everybody aggregate to the paint lady, and then you paid with an international credit card. Okay, so that's great. Um, but still... I think two weeks later when you came back, you're like, oh, the credit card didn't go through because it's an international one. We can't do it. So we have to do PayPal. Okay, fine. And then a week before we went, he texted me again at 3 p.m. Hey, sis, you know what? It's PayPal. We have to pay tax. It's a huge tax, okay? And as much budget control I've been doing, I've reserved some buffer. It's not enough. So Danny texts me. I'm at work. I'm like, eh, I don't know what to do. God, please help us, but I'll worry about this later. 6.30 p.m., our construction leader, Polo, he texted me. Hey, Yipan, let me tell you something really cool. So we bought a lot of material in Taiwan, and because the quantity was really huge, so the boss gave us a big discount. That discount just offset that right there. So a week before we went there, we were on budget. Yeah. Yes. And this sounds like all people stuff, right? <clears throat> what is something that we cannot control? Weather. So when we went there, it was the rain season in Kenya, April. And so everyone's worried and praying and, you know, just doing that. But we went, and we, there's one thing we didn't buy. We didn't buy the cover sheets. 
That's one thing we didn't buy. We went there. Every day we prayed for this, and every day it was sunny. And what's really weird is that in the same city, other, piece, other places of the city were raining like crazy, right? Because uh, 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 Bohan called us, hey, it's raining. What are you guys going to do? We're like, huh? Raining? <laughs> it's not raining. <laughs> so we finished the whole project. And at the very last day, we did a ceremony. We did a handover ceremony. So symbolically, we used the paintbrush, the hammer, and the computer. So we handed this over to them as a ceremony of, yes, we're giving this back to you. <clears throat> and pretty much right at that second, the rain started to fall. Yeah, it's as if the rain season held off for a good 10 days just so that we can finish this ministry, just so that God can give this gift to Comito School. And as you heard from Danny, it doesn't stop there. When Pastor James told us about the change of the uh, testing system and all that, we were thinking, wow, we went there. We thought we were bringing computers. We thought we were building a computer room. You know what the end story is? The end story is that a miracle happened there, and we became part of it just by showing up. That's what happened. So yes, a missionary can look like this. And there's always gonna, need for, uh, there's always gonna be a need for full-time missionaries. But I think most of us, that's probably not your calling. So a missionary can also look like this. There's, we do this a lot, teaching, preaching, children ministry, prayer, home visitation. A lot of non-church staff, non-pastors can do that. But wait a minute, a lot of people say, hey, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to interact with people. I just do my job, right? Well, welcome to the 21st century, because a missionary can also look like this. Bring your gifts over there. Bring what you have over there. And many times when I invite people to go, the question is, well, what can I do? Well, I don't know. Because what happens is that when you go there, one is you realize there are things that you thought you couldn't do, and then you can. Or you bring your gifts there, and you realize, I never thought my gifts could be used in this context. Or you discover new capabilities that you just kind of had limits on yourself, but then you can get pushed beyond. Like I mentioned, a little baby step, God can do so much more with that. So this can also be a missionary. And besides that, every year because I invite people, so they ask me, what exactly is a mission trip? What are you guys doing? You know, every time I come back, people at work, they ask me, is it like, oh, some uh, philanthropy work? Is it like some overseas volunteer? What is a mission trip? <clears throat> is it what you guys do that define yourselves? Well, if you look on the surface, yes, it's a little bit of all of this, right? But going into missions for 15 years and so many times different places, I really felt that this doesn't really fully capture what a mission is. Um, you guys know that in some companies, they have this event called uh, Bring Your Kids to Work, right? So you bring your kids to work, mom and dad, you show the kids, and it's not really about the work that the kid does, it's really about the relationship. It's really about showing the kid what your work is about, what your heart is, what your expectation of the kid is. And the kid would open, have his eyes open, have his perspective open, and cannot think of work in the same way anymore. That's bring your kids to work. And missions are God's version of bring your kids to work. That's what it is. It's not about what we do. It's about what you see and who you become when you have that new perspective. That's what it is. And that's why throughout all these years of mission, many people come back transformed. Many people come back having a different view. Many people come back having a different idea of what the kingdom is, and they really, really understand the power. So as a closing remark, I also quoted Ephesians 3 without syncing up with Danny. Um, we're here because of the gospel. What is the gospel? Gospel is good news, right? It's good news. It's not good advice. News is something that happens and there's impact, regardless of what you think of the news or the incident. What is the good news that we have? Just like last week well, that the pastor shared, <clears throat> what Jesus did on the cross and through his resurrection, the whole process of revival, of restoration, of resurre resurrection just kickstarted again. It's just flipping the story all over again. And the power continues until now. And through Jesus, we all have access to that abundant power. So yes, we do accept the gospel, this good news. We share the good news. And through prayer, through reading the words, through fellowship, we learn how to be transformed and shaped by the good news. But moreover, in missions, we actually get to become part of that good news. Thank you.
I want to thank Yipan and, and Danny for sharing what they share. Um, about 10 years ago, the church came to me and, and, um, and asked that we would start an English ministry. Um, to be honest, I didn't want to start an English ministry. I came, I came back to Taipei. I came back to Taiwan. Uh, my whole heart was to see tra Taiwan transform. And I want to see Taiwanese saved. And, um, and I'm pretty sure they came to me because I speak English. <laughs> 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 and so I was, I, uh, it just, no, it wasn't really my thing. And then the senior, and, and, the, and the senior pastor at the time was my father. And the, the executive pastor at the time was Pastor O. They kept coming with this request. And, and I began to pray about it. And God said, he's going to rise up. He's going to raise up a missionary movement out of this ministry. And I want to tell you, he has been doing that. And this ministry, even though it might look small, compared to the whole ministry of Bread of Life. But this ministry has been, has been kind of the, 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 the propeller or the, the furnace or the fire power, fire engine of our church as far as mission work is concerned. And the reason for that is people come from different nations. And, and it's amazing what we've been able to do in the past 10 years. Uh, where we, we planted a church in, in, uh, in, in Hungary, in Guatemala, in all the different places, in Costa Rica, in, and God is doing more. And so as a congregation, we, we, I want to, I, I, I've asked him to share just so that we can realign ourselves to this call. And you might not be able to go next year, but if you can, we want you to come. We want you to experience this with us. And it's, it's a life-changing experience. When you give yourself, when you open up yourself and just to serve. And see, Father God is going to take you on an adventure of a lifetime if you just make yourself available. So as we wrap up the, the, the meeting today, I, we have a special offerings we want to collect for the mission. Uh, so there is an envelope that was uh, that was on your seat. Um, take some time to fill it out, and and you can, um, if you don't have the cash, we you can uh, you can write your credit card. You can you can also you know give your offering through uh, through credit card. But we'll give you some time. Um, fill this out, and and because um, we want to do more, and we want to give more. And so not only do we want, do we want you to give towards uh, our mission work, we also want you to pray for our mission work. But better yet, come with us. Come with us to the world. And some of us, you can take us to your world. Or we can go back with you. Take us back. <laughs> but we want to see the gospel of Jesus Christ transform the world. And so, even though I'm in Taiwan, the amazing thing about this church is we get to disciple nations. And just imagine with me, um, last week I was sharing in the mother church along with our Indonesian pastor. You know, there's 300,000 Indonesian workers in Taiwan. And we started our Indonesian ministry 30 years ago. And just hearing the stories, how they reach out to Indonesian. And we have, you know, the, 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 there's a lot of this, these Southeast Asian workers, the Filipinos, the Vietnamese, the Indonesians. Do you know that we also have a Vietnamese ministries in Taipei Bread of Life? We also have a Filipino ministries in Bread of Life. It's so encouraging that you don't even have to get out to the nations to disciple the nations. Like you can do this in your backyard. And I want to encourage you, if you have a heart for, to reach those people, get involved. 
There's so much that needs to be done. And they're doing amazing work. In fact, you know, did you know that Indonesian ministry, they have so many outreach programs teaching them, teaching, teaching these workers Chinese and teaching them English. Many English teachers too. If you want to get involved with that, please let us know. And they teach them computers. And then the Indonesian workers are like, and the majority of them are, well, all, pretty much all of them are Muslims. And they come to one, they say, why do you guys love us so much? And he made, the incredible thing about our uh, Indonesian pastor, she's an Indonesian Chinese, came to Taiwan in 1997 when the big riots broke out. And did you know that Indonesian Chinese, they grew up afraid of Indonesians. They live a separate life. They don't want, they, they, they just, you know, they don't, they hang out where Chinese people hang out. They go to malls, they do different things. And especially when she left Indonesia, when the riots broke out, the riot was against Chinese. She came with a fear of Indonesians. And something amazing took, took place in Taipei. She became part of the Indonesian ministry as a student and the Lord began to transform her heart and now she has such a profound love for the Indonesians and this is the amazing work that God is doing in better life and you and I have the privilege to be a part of this and this is what we're calling and inviting you into as you give your offering today, as you give your mission offering today, I want you to consider about going with us. When is our super team next year, Danny? Uh, March 25th to April 4th. Now, by faith, take your, take your phone out. Mark it on your calendar. I know you might not have the money. I know you might not be prepared to go. But by faith, how many of you are interested in going? Just show me your hands how many of you are interested just at least thinking about it all right so i'm gonna pray for those of you that didn't raise your hands. okay i'm kidding i'm not no i'm not 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 to guilt trip you or anything but let, let's pray i'm gonna ask the welcome team to come forward but let's pray let's pray and then we're gonna collect the offerings father god we thank you we thank you for today we thank you for wonderful testimonies that Ipan and Danny share. We, but we, most of all, we thank you for your love for us. It is your love and your grace that we're able to share our lives and we're able to share the good news in Kenya or in Hungary, or everywhere you send us, Lord. Father God, I just pray for each and every one of us as we respond to your call, as we give, we're not just giving our money, but we're giving of ourselves. Lord, sanctify and that, Lord, I pray that you just make a way for people that have a desire to go next year. Whether it's financial provisions, whether they're able to take time off, but just able to work something miraculous in their lives so that they know it is your heart that you want them there. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask the welcome team to collect the offering. Oh, um, well, oh, you guys are going to send? Okay, okay. Are you guys, why don't, you, why, don't, why don't we stand? Why don't we stand? As an act of worship, I'm going to invite you guys. If you have an offering, I want you to invite you guys just to come forward. I want the, I want the welcome to just stand in the front. As an act of worship, if you have prepared your offerings, just come forward and drop it in the, in, in the offering bag. And then we're just, I'm just, uh, we're in, we're going to close the meeting. Father God, we thank you for this morning. You are a way maker. Not just for us in Taiwan. We also lift up all our brand churches around the world. And all our mission works around the world. You are a way maker for all of us. So Father God, I ask you to make us your vessels holy and pleasing to you use us use this ministry 
to transform nations, to impact nations. Father God, I pray. I pray each and every one of us gets to go to work with Daddy. Get to see your world. Get to partake in your perspective so that our lives will never be the same. We receive your grace today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, release grace to each and every one of us today. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give him all the glory and all the honor and all the praises. He is worthy. He is worthy. Amen. Amen. Amen.